Hello and welcome into another edition of the Danny's Income Show. My name is Matthew Kuyper, Sports Information Director here at Cal U. Coach, it's a new year. Uh, again, it's been a while. Uh, seemingly one of those things that's a holiday occurrence for us, but again, we're going back into it here. We'll have a lot more of these episodes going on, but how's the holidays with the family and the new year so far? It's been great. Had a great holiday, and uh, obviously with basketball, it's a very short holiday, but back into it now. Uh, my kids had a great time, and uh, we, had a, we really enjoyed the holidays. Perfect. We're going to take a look back here, going back into December here, right before uh, Christmas break. We had a couple of PSAC crossover games here at uh, Cal U. Uh, had a non-conference with Carlo, then we came right back into crossover play, uh, beginning first with Westchester on December 18th. It's one of those games that was back and forth. Uh, had faced a big deficit in the second half and was able to come back. Uh, but just th thoughts on the uh, Golden Rams contest there. Yeah, take our hats off to them. They, they just were better than we were that night. We just uh, didn't execute well on both ends, gave up too many points points and um, just didn't play very good defensively. Offensively, obviously, we scored enough points to, to win, but it was a disappointing loss. But like I said, uh, in this league, you got to be ready to play, and I thought they had a little bit more sense of urgency for that game than we did. Yeah, it was one of those games where you get to the free throw line 41 times. I mean, that really helped out. Uh, they didn't really have anybody foul out, per se, but they had so many guys in foul trouble. Uh, it's just one of those things they had to keep rotating guys in and out uh, throughout the contest. Yeah, it hurt us a little bit, too. I think we missed 13 foul shots, um, you know, and that would make a big difference, obviously, in that game. But we attack well. You know, we're, we're hard to guard, so we can create some problems for some teams on that end, uh, on the offensive end. But, uh, you know, I just feel like when our defense is sound, we're, we're a tough team to beat. Yeah, in that game, uh, Phil Alston had 29 points, another double-double, 29 points, 13 rebounds, and again, four blocks. Uh, just, again, having one of those breakout performances there throughout the season we've seen so far uh, for Phil being able to drive the lane here and getting a nice shot. Yeah, Phil was aggressive, and uh, he created a, a matchup problem for them with his quickness uh, on the perimeter, being able to put the ball on the floor and did a great job, obviously, on the offensive glass and scoring around the basket as well. But he had a big game for us, and, uh, you know, we needed every point. Uh, we could have used a few more, but... He was very solid offensively. Yeah, in that game especially, one of those things too, uh, we don't see in the highlights, but Brett Pegram uh, went down early in the first half, and then he came back a little bit in the second half, but again, just played minimal minutes there. Uh, but with the idea of the resiliency of the team here coming back uh, without their floor general uh, and Pegram, uh, it says a lot about these guys uh, here still only at this time. It was only just a handful of games, nine games into the season. Yeah, obviously when you lose Brent, uh, you lose a lot. Uh, he's, he's our point guard. He's our leader. He creates uh, so much uh, offense for himself and uh, his teammates and for him to go down uh, it, it's difficult you know for us especially uh, when it happens uh, in the middle of a game and you don't have preparation you haven't prepared you know for that so uh, I thought you know uh, for what that him going down and us being able to battle back and have an opportunity to win that game showed me a lot about some other guys on our team that really stepped up and did a good job. Yeah, that game was on December 18th, and again, uh, your point guard goes down, been around for your starter uh, with you and your programs, basically. And again, the next day you got to come back and play again uh, with Millersville. Basically, less than 24 hours later, you're going right back at it again, uh, facing a Marauder squad uh, that came in with a 7-2 record. So that had to be a, quite a challenge for you. Uh, rough, rough night of sleep, I'm sure. Very much, and not a lot of sleep because you're going from one to the next very, very quickly. And, uh, you know, for us, I uh, had a few injuries in the Westchester game, not knowing uh, if uh, Brent was going to be able to play with his shoulder, with Preston with his ankle. So there was a lot of uh, you know, concern what they were going to do. Obviously, Brent wasn't able uh, to, to play uh, the following day, uh, and Preston was, but uh, pretty much played on, on one leg, I thought was uh, a, a big win for us. Uh, and it was a big team win. Anytime you, you know, win without your point guard, you know, all-conference guard that does so much for you. It says a lot about the other guys, and obviously we had guys that stepped up and made some big plays for us throughout the game. Yeah, we're watching the first half highlights here, but honestly the name of the game in the second half was totally Zion Collins, uh, finishing with 34. He had 24 just in the second half. Uh, he basically made 10 straight shots in the second half there, so that was one of those games. Everybody knows how good Zion is, but with the idea of Brent not being on the floor for an entire game, that was definitely a different look uh, for an opponent to see uh, Zion and different point uh, guys holding the ball. Yeah, Zion played great that game. He did, you know, not only with his offense, obviously making 10 out of 11 shots in the second half um, and, and making his last 10 shots of the game, uh, his defense was incredible uh, throughout the weekend. He did a great job on Westchester's best player. I think he held him three for like 11, and then obviously uh, – uh, with uh, Millersville guarding their best player and doing a great job in his team defense because we got a couple charges on him as well. But offensively, he, he, was, he played a great 
game, but our execution uh, against Millersville, I think, was, in the, especially in the first half, was the best half of basketball we played just with cutting and screening in our offense and moving the basketball. We did a really good job with that. Yeah, in this game also, Brayson Lucas, who everybody's seen a lot of dunks this year, uh, showed his range. He hit four or five from three-point land and uh, finished with 14 points. So that's a nice thing there to see. Uh, the guys finished with eight three-pointers made in the first half, so that really gets you going when you make eight threes here before halftime. Yes, and Bryson is uh, is a dynamic player, so you, you know the dunks are great, but he's a capable three-point shooter. He really shoots the ball well, and you know I think the, the sky is a limit for him. He's got an opportunity to be a great player uh, if he continues to work hard and you know continue to improve uh, his ball handling and shooting. But defensively, you know, he's so versatile. He can guard a big. He can guard a guard. So he's uh, very important to the success of our team, and it's great to see him playing so well for us. And in this game too, uh, Phil Alston was in foul trouble. Uh, fewest minutes he really played all year because of the foul trouble. But between uh, Bryce and Lucas and Keith Palak getting a double double, one of those things there, he still had a presence in the middle between those guys and that length. Yeah, Keith played great as well. You know, uh, he knocked down shots, uh, but Keith also moved well without the ball, scored, rebounded the ball very well. And Keith, you know, has just been so consistent for us uh, this year. Though uh, being a freshman, his consistency uh, just seems uh, way ahead of what uh, you expect from freshmen most of the time. He just does things on both ends of the ball, rebounds the ball very well. Offensively, you know, everybody talks about he shoots it, but he passes the ball extremely well, and he's hard to guard because he has the ability to shoot it, but he also has the ability to put the ball on the floor, and he really stepped up. Him and Bryson played great for us in that Millersville game because, like you said, you know, Phil being in foul trouble uh, just wasn't out there as much. I think he played 13 or 14 minutes in a game, and, uh, have those two guys, you know, have uh, double doubles was really big for us. Yeah, he had a nice uh, double digit lead at halftime, and he shoot uh, was 58% in the second half. So that's one of those things you talked about the first half, cutting and moving. Second half, uh, Zion was a big part of that, hitting 10 shots in a row. But it's really nice to see the shooting percentage in the second half when you have a lead, just to be able to extend it and build that uh, to really quench any kind of momentum that the opposing team would have. And again, I think it, you know, always with us falls back to execution. When we get open looks, we, we've got talented guys. They make shots and. Uh, you know, Millersville is a very good defense team. They hold teams to 41% from the field. And for us to execute like that, uh, I felt like, uh, you know, it was a good way to go into break uh, with some momentum and uh, get some rest, which we desperately needed with some of our injuries. Yeah, speaking of breaks, we're going to take a quick one here, and we'll come back and look here at the beginning of the part of the 2022 season. Already have one game in and another big one coming up tomorrow, but as Coach says, every game is a big one. So we'll be right back after a quick moment. Vulcan basketball is back at Bloomsburg, at East Stroudsburg, women at Bowie State, men home versus Carlo, home versus Westchester, home versus Millersville, home versus Kutztown, home versus IUP, at UPJ, at Shepherd, home versus Slippery Rock, at Edinburgh, at Clarion, at Mercyhurst. Home versus Gannon. Home versus Seton Hill. At Slippery Rock. Home versus Pitt Johnstown. Women at Salem. At IUP. Home versus Edinburgh. At Seton Hill. Home versus Clarion. Home versus Mercyhurst. At Gannon. Follow the Vulcans live on CUTV Sports 1, on the PSAC Digital Network, and at calvulcans.com. Welcome back to the Data State Income Show. My name is Matt Kite for the Sports Information Director here at Cal U. And with me, of course, is Head Coach Danny Sankum. Uh, after the holiday break, a nice little handful of days off. You guys came back a couple days after Christmas and getting geared up for New Year's. But again, you don't play on New Year's. You play the date after. And I picked up a nice crossover win against Kutztown. Uh, what was it like getting the guys back again after having seven days off for the NCAA rule and then getting them back and just trying to get off some of the uh, lag of the holiday uh, from all the root, uh, food to eat and hang out with friends, family, things like that? Absolutely. You know, you worry about that as a coach. we got a good group, though. Uh, our first practice, uh, I was amazed how well we practiced. Just passing and catching usually. Uh, you have some issues with that when you first come back, and timing is off a little bit. But our guys, you know, we practiced really hard the first two days back. Third day, we, I think we were smart because we practiced so well. We wanted to try to save the guys and then practice a little bit harder. And then day before game, kind of got into our routine. And it was big for us because we're playing a lot of games here in a row. And we had to move that game uh, due to Cutstown being in finals when we were 
uh, originally supposed to uh, play it. So uh, usually you have a little bit more time before you play at that point in time. But I was really happy with how we played on the defensive end and uh, I thought we were ready to play. So I was excited that we came back and we had the positive energy to have great practices and then that carried over into the game. Yeah, you talk about good defense there. You held Kutztown to shooting only 31.9% from the floor and only 5 of 22 from three-point land. So uh, guarding the rim and also guarding the perimeter, uh, great team defense there overall. Yeah, I think our guys were locked in. And obviously, you know, from a coaching standpoint, uh, you know, when you don't play for a while, you get a good chance to really get a good feel for your opponent. And we spent a lot of time as a coaching staff getting ready for this game. And uh, we had a little bit more time, obviously, than we normally do as far as over Christmas break. So our guys really followed the game plan, especially defensively, to the T. So we were very happy with that. Yeah, yeah you can see in the highlights here, you see Brent coming in the, uh, throughout the course there. But again, balanced effort. You had all five starters and double figures there. As a coach, I'm sure uh, you love seeing that everybody getting involved. And also, it just shows it's so difficult how to stop a team when you have that many guys who can just flat out score. Yeah, because we, we, we struggled a little bit. I thought we made some shots early in the game. Uh, I thought we took some really good shots that didn't fall that we normally tend to make. So our field goal percentage, I think we shot about 42 and a half, 43 percent. Uh, but we were still able to score um, 80 points because we were aggressive being able to get to the foul line. And then we did shoot the three uh, very well. But I thought we had a couple good looks for some mid-range shots that normally go down that didn't. And, you know, our, our guys battled. We did a good job on the offensive glass. So. You know, anytime you shoot 42% from the field and still score over 80 points, you know, we feel if we score 80 points, we got a good chance to win the game. And right here we see Zion Collins scoring his 1,000th career point. Again, uh, not going to be the last Vulcan probably to score 1,000 under uh, in this offense, but again, nice to see a career achievement there with him and Brent. Uh, it's a milestone that took me, I think, back to 2003 is the last time we've had two 1,000 point scorers on the same roster. Uh, so it's a nice asset having two veteran guys who can just score uh, whenever they need to. Yeah, obviously for Zion, that's a special moment. Um, you know, we know he's going to go on and score uh, much more than that but he uh, you know he, he's a tough guy to guard and he can score in so many different ways so really excited that he was able to get that accomplishment uh, under his belt but he's got a lot more goals that he will obtain uh, over the next two years for us for sure. And in that game as well, speaking of uh, guys who could score, Phil also another double-double. Bryson Lucas making his first career start, almost getting a double-double in that contest there. So it's great to see, again, those guys with length finding ways to continue to find a uh, score inside and outside there. Yeah, and Kutz sounds big, you know, so for Phil to have, I think, 14 rebounds and Bryson to have nine and Zion to have nine. And I think we were out-rebounded by one. We were a little disappointed with that. But they had a lot of opportunities to get offensive rebounds because they struggled, you know, shooting the ball uh, from the field. But overall, I thought our, our rebounding was good. And obviously, Bryson, Phil, and Zion did a great job on the glass for us. Yeah, it's not the end of crossover play. There's still one more coming up here with Shepard coming up next week. Uh, but again, that leads us right into PSAC West play opening up uh, with, again, one of the powers in the Atlantic region and the PSAC and IUP. Uh, top 10 in the country right now. They've won the last two conference championships that were held. Uh, what have you seen so far on uh, IEP? You know they're going to have Foster yeah. for another triple-double their day. Uh, Porterfield's a legitimate uh, all-conference player. Very talented team. You know, uh, their guard play is very good. Foster can make plays for others, does a great job setting his teammates up. Obviously, he scores the ball very well. And Porterfield inside, you know, shoots it well. He passes it well. Uh, but their entire team... Uh, has the ability to make plays. They shoot it well. They pass it well. Um, they defend extremely hard. They play hard, and they, you know, they believe they're going to win games. That's that's the culture that they've created there, uh, and uh, they play extremely hard. So we know we're going to have to be uh, gritty and play really hard and execute well to get the result we want to get. And again, the beginning of conference play here. We'll take a quick look at the PSAC West standings here. Uh, again, overall, right now. Uh, nobody has any really conference games in in terms of divisional play, some crossover games. Uh, Slippery Rock right there at the top of it with IUP, Mercyhurst, and Gannon. Uh, Mercyhurst and IUP, two of those teams, given what they've been in recent years, no surprise. UPJ, a nice solid season as well. Uh, and then you see the, the back half of there, uh, Caillou again, uh, three and two. A couple of those games were close. Con every game this year has been close to any of those losses, so it could have very easily been right at the top of that league. But overall, what's your thoughts so far in the PSAC West when you look at these kind of standings there? Just what I expected. You know, our, 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 our side in general is very talented, well-coached teams, talented players. Um, you know, dogfights. Uh, it'll be dogfights uh, from January till uh, the end of February until the conference tournament. You know, to win games, you're going to earn them. Uh, you're going to have to beat uh, – 
the other teams, uh, and you're going to have to play physical and, and, and execute. I think it's, you know, this year, I think, you know, from top to bottom on our side, it is very competitive. Yeah, the West is one of those things right now, looking at it, it's still early, nobody's even played each other yet, but you can tell there's going to be a handful of teams. And even looking beyond the upcoming schedule of this Wednesday, uh, UPJ is on Saturday. It's a program that's been very well run for over the years, a uh, program you're familiar with from the time in the WIAC with Wheeling, and then when they before they joined the uh, MEC, uh, it's another one of those programs that you know on Saturday is going to be a tough one there uh, with their coaching staff and what they bring back with. Kompka is one of the top players in the league. Absolutely. They're, they're very hard to guard. They uh, run a ton of sets and they execute very, very well. Um, and, you, you know, Kromka is great, but they, they have other guys that can beat you. So um, you can't just focus in on one guy. And then defensively, they're very sound as well. So uh, it's a big week for us. Obviously, uh, Kutztown got under our belt. Uh, we can't look past, obviously, surely IUP, but we know. You know, after that, we, we've got Pitt Johnstown. So we've got an opportunity, you know, to play three really good teams this week, and hopefully we can finish the week 3-0. That's the that's the goal. Yeah, it's one of those things there. It's a challenge. I mean, you're used to once conference play starts, you're two games a week. Uh, you're starting the year off with three. One of the few schools in the league that has that option with the idea of uh, moving that Kutztown game. So it's actually nice probably from an aspect of getting those guys in, uh, getting them back in rhythm, so that way coming from break, you're not having to worry about, okay, how these guys look. You've already seen it one time. Yeah, I think it's good to play a game, you know, before we would play – IUP, uh, you know, just to get the rust off and have a game under your belt and, and be back into that groove. When you don't play a game, you know, on December 19th and you don't play again until January 5th, that's a long time not to play. And IUP obviously snuck a game in uh, over, uh, I think, the 30th or 31st they played when they got back as well. So, you know, I think that's, that's good scheduling on their part. But uh, I'm glad we had Kutz down under our belt uh, and we were able to get the win and, and Obviously, we need to be ready to play tomorrow. Yeah, it's actually uh, tomorrow we'll close out a five-game homestand. Pretty unusual in basketball having five games in a row. Most of those were the league schedule makers, nothing in terms of your plan, but the idea of having five games in a row. Uh, it's going to be feel, being weird on Saturday when you guys get on the bus for the first time in a long time. Yeah, it will be, but I like uh, our team likes to travel, so we look forward to that as well. But, you know, like I say to you all the time, you know, uh, our focus here is uh, for tomorrow night, and our focus is on IUP right now. Well, Coach, thank you for taking a couple minutes here. I know it's been a busy couple days here getting ready for the Crimson Hawks. Again, tip-off tomorrow, 5.30 start. Note the move-up time there. Uh, 5.30 tip-off for the men's game at the Convocation Center between Cal U and IUP, two of the big rivals in the PSAC West uh, over the – decades here uh, back in the 1990s you couldn't find a spot in hammer hall when they played there so again uh, feel free to come on out if not and have to stay home feel free to watch on the psac network and again uh, please visit calvulcans.com for any schedule changes this game moved up two hours uh, keep checking for other updates throughout the year for men's and women's basketball um, so it's gonna be quite a lot of action going on once everything gets going back into it here so thanks again for joining into the danny sankum show